Today I'm going to show you how to make a classic English scone, perfect for an afternoon or cream tea, and I'm going to show you a slightly different method to normal, something you'd normally see in a hotel or a restaurant. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put some hot water over our fruit, this time currants. It plumps up the fruit, it stops it from being burnt as it bakes, and it also just gives you a much nicer feel in the end product. So we're just going to leave that to sit and soak for a while while we make the mix. So what we have is some plain flour and a little bit of salt. And to that we're going to add some baking powder. And then what we're going to do is add our butter and just rub it in until you can't really see any chunks of butter anymore. And the reason we use the tips of our fingers is they're the coldest part of the hands. So if you rubbed it between your palms, you'd melt the butter and you wouldn't get as light a scone then. So you're trying to be nice and delicate. So when you can't feel any lumps of butter anymore, that means you've rubbed it in nice and fine. So we can add our caster sugar in there and just stir that through with your hands. And then we have some milk and some eggs as our binder. So we're gonna crack three eggs into our milk and just use a fork just to break that up and mix that together so it's nicely combined. And then we're gonna add that and our fruit to our dry goods. So just make a well in the middle of our dry goods like that. And then we're gonna take the liquid, pour that in along with our fruit as well. I was taught as a kid that you have to be really careful and not touch this mixture at all and try and be really, really delicate with it. However, I spent some time at Le Manoir, which is Raymond Blanc's restaurant down in Oxford, and I was shown a very different way of doing it. So what you're going to do is mix it until you have a nice batter, dust the surface quite liberally with quite a lot of flour, because this is a very, very sticky dough. And then take the dough onto the surface, flour the top of the dough as well, so it doesn't stick to your hands. And what you're gonna do is just very lightly fold it, so you're not pressing, you're not kneading, you're just incorporating air, and you're just looking for a really smooth dough. And if you find it is sticking, just add a little bit more flour. And when you find it's just becoming nice and smooth and uniform, then you can stop. When we've got our dough nice and made, we just need to clean down the surface so it doesn't stick as we roll it out. So I'm just using a plastic bread scraper, and then again, lightly flour your surface so it doesn't stick as you roll it out and then either using floured hands or a rolling pin just pat it out until it's maybe an inch thick we're going to take a plain cookie cutter what we're going to do is dip it in flour and that way it won't stick as we cut our scones and you want to never twist because if you twist the cutter it's going to kind of jar the surface so it all screws up on the side and it means it can't rise properly so just straight down movement like that once you're down on the surface, you can give it a little twist then because you're not going to harm the dough. And it's still a very sticky dough, so just be very careful, try not to disturb it. And place it onto our baking tray, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to leave the scones for about an hour before we bake them. So you get this slightly more posh afternoon tea look. So it's a really nice added extra. Once you have cut all the scones out, you can very lightly re-knead the rest of the dough. You won't get as nice a finish on those ones, but they'll still taste delicious. When our scones have had about an hour to rest, what you'll see is they kind of start to expand slightly. The bottom kind of puffs out a little bit. So if you look at this one, you can see that you've got a slightly wider uh, part of the base. And all that does is when it bakes, you get that slightly more hotel look, that slightly more refined kind of afternoon tea style, but it's purely for, uh, for looks really. So what we just need to do is wash them with egg. So try not to get this onto the sides of the scone, just on the top. And if you don't have any more eggs, you can do this with a bit of milk if you want. And it just gives that nice shine. So once they're all glazed, we can pop those in the oven for about 15 minutes until they're nice and golden. So these are our finished scones. So you're gonna take a scone, and technically you should never cut a scone, just break it open with your fingers like that. Take a spoonful of the clotted cream and then onto the scone like that and then just top it with some jam. So that's our classic scone, perfect for a cream tea or afternoon tea. If you'd like to see any new recipes or different techniques, leave me a comment, like or subscribe and I'll do my best to make a video that you want to see. Flourless chocolate cake. It's one adapted from one of my books and it's really, really easy. We have some dark chocolate and some unsalted butter, and then some light brown sugar, eggs, and a little bit of caster sugar. So really few ingredients, but really simple to make, and you get this delicious, rich, but also light at the same time chocolate cake. 